Hey friends, I'm Riskit, and welcome to part two of the video series where I show you how I created an animated logo using Affinity Designer, Moho Pro, Adobe After Effects, and Ableton Live. So if you haven't seen part one for this video already, I'll make sure to leave a link down below in the description and you can go and check that out. In this video, we're going to recreate the head from scratch solely in Moho, and then we're gonna create some facial rigging controls so that the face is a little bit easier to animate. And then we're going to do some facial animation, including making the head turn from a side profile to a front profile, which gives it a really cool 3D effect. So let's dive in and have a look. All right, so now it was time to recreate the head from scratch. So I've imported an image of the head and now I'm going to trace over it using Moho's vector brushes and try and match it as closely as possible. Now using Moho's pen tool um, took a little bit of getting used to, but it's, it's actually pretty awesome. Um, you kind of do one more click than you would in any other um, vector program. You sort of draw and drag out a point and then you have to drag from the last point you left off at and draw to the next one. It's a little hard to explain, but it kind of means that you can extend more than one path from a vertice, um, which is really interesting. At first, I didn't understand the use for it, um, but after doing this illustration, I finally do, and um, I, I really like it. So I went up browsing through the brushes included with Moho as well, and I found one that was giving off a slightly rough texture, and I went with that. So it was basically what I was doing in Affinity Designer, but just figuring out how to do it in Moho as well. I had to pay special attention to what parts were going to be uh, separate from one another. And it took me a little bit to try and wrap my head around um, sort of fills and strokes. Now, I think that's one of the interesting things about Moho that's catching me off guard is it definitely does things its own way. Um, it doesn't really seem to take much from other applications, which in itself makes it quite unique. And even though I found it relatively intuitive, um, some of the, the way things behave, to me at least, is kind of unintuitive. One thing, for example, is if I hold Alt while dragging out a vertice, just to change the angle slightly to give it more of a sharp angle rather than a curved angle, and then I finish drawing my shape and I go to convert it to a shape so that I can add on a stroke and a fill. Moho just doesn't let me. I can't understand why. Um, so basically, whenever I draw something, I, I never hold down Alt. And I always just let it do sloppy curves all over the place, convert it to a shape, and then go in and fix it later. Otherwise, I'm not able to convert any of these things to shapes and therefore I'm not able to color them to later on be animated. I'm finding that really frustrating actually. So if anybody in the comments section can give me any advice um, or even uh, sort of help me understand why Moho does that, uh, I'd love to hear it. So now I'm coming in and drawing different parts of the face, including the eyebrows. I'm trying my best to match it as closely to the original illustration as possible. Um, it was a little bit challenging and probably took me um, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. And I, I think that was basically just due to my own lack of understanding of different tools in Moho. One thing I really loved about Moho though is that it has a stroke width feature. So that was really nice to try and get sort of pointed ends on certain strokes that I was drawing. I also wanted to do these um, dangly strands of hair separately as well. Moho actually has physics built into it. Um, so that means that as I move her head, 
um, these things will sort of react to whatever movement her head is doing. And you have a, a few controls over how they react as well. So I set these up as separate objects and I planned on animating the layer order of some of these chains of hair later on. Um, and it just saved me having to animate them by hand. Um, it's a really, really cool feature and I absolutely love it. So here you can see I've set up a few smart bones, which are these little bones that sort of sit off to the side of the illustration. And these bones are going to be controlling various parts of the facial animation. So we have independent controls that allow us to open and close the left and right eye, or a control that allows us to do both. We also have a control for opening and closing the mouth, and we have controls for raising and lowering the eyebrows. A good way to think of this is that each control contains its own little timeline. In there you put in animation like I'm doing now to close the eye and make it blink. And then as I turn that dial, um, that animation is basically played depending on where the dial is. These make animating different parts super easy later on. Um, really all you've got to be worrying about is twisting these dials left or right as you animate and it just makes the whole process a lot easier to wrap your head around as you're animating. I've also set up a couple of other controls to uh, tilt the inner part of each eyebrow so that you can get a little bit more expression, you know, more of an angry or surprised expression. Now I'm setting up a control that allows me to turn the head to a front on position. So basically what you can see here is that I'm animating each one of those parts within that smart bone. So this basically involves dragging across different facial features and then tweaking it slightly with the pen tool so that it looks correct when it's front on. And then we can seamlessly rotate the head. Even though it's a 2D illustration, this will give it a real 3D sort of look. And um, it's really great. I've set up a little bit of masking as well for the highlights in the hair. So as she turns her head, those highlights sort of shape around the hairline and um, kind of stay put, but it, it would look weird if she was turning her head and the highlights turned with them. So being able to mask these out and make sure that they stay put um, sort of just sells that believability. Moho also allows you to animate the order of different objects as well. So for example, she has an ear that we can't see when her, when her head is turned to the side, but when we turn her head front on, we're able to change the layer order and make sure that that appears on top. We also need to do this with the strand of hair that's hanging off the left side of her face. And there we go, doing a quick animation test. We basically have the general character animation down pat now. I sort of render it out and tweak it along the way, have a look at how it looks in After Effects. I turn motion blur on for a lot of these parts as well, and I just continued to come back and tweak things until it was to my liking. Cool, and that was basically our character animation done. So that's pretty much everything for the character animation side of things. In the next video, we're going to be opening up After Effects and pretty much animating everything else, save for a couple of elements that I do go back to Moho for. After that, I'll be showing you how I sourced the samples and brought them all together into Ableton Live and made some music to go along with it. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.